Homecoming week kicked off in Ligorian with a parade in the village and concluded with the homecoming game on Friday night. We'll have the exciting highlights coming up. Local families enjoyed the beautiful weather during Orion Township's Fall Festival of Family Fun at Camp Agawam. The spooky season officially got underway as the undead roamed the streets of downtown Orion during the annual Zombie Walk fundraiser. And the Orion Township Fire Department celebrated Fire Prevention Month with an open house at Station One. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. And I'm Lexi McKinney. We'll have those stories and much more on this edition of Owen TV News. Orion High School celebrated homecoming week with fun activities at the school as well as the popular powder puff football game on Thursday and the homecoming game on Friday night. Of course it all kicked off with a parade in the village. On the afternoon of Sunday October 6th the streets of downtown Lake Orion were closed to traffic for the annual homecoming parade sponsored by Lake Orion High School's leadership class. Participants gathered at Blanche Sims Elementary School and made their way along Flint Street Turning the corner onto Broadway Street, taking part in the parade, were students from Lake Orion's elementary schools, middle schools, and the high school. Various clubs were represented as well as athletes from a wide variety of sports and, of course, the LOHS marching band. The parade concluded as the crowd was introduced to the homecoming court. Our first couple and or team is Evelyn Taylor and Gabe Scott. Evie's a member of the varsity soccer team, as well as a member of the executive board in the leadership class. Gabe is a member of our varsity basketball team. Give a warm welcome to Evie Taylor and Gabe Scott. Our next pair is Parker Gannon and Allison O'Rourke. Allie is a member of the leadership class, as well as a varsity volleyball player. Parker's a member of our Dragon Broadcasting team, as well as a varsity lacrosse player. Give it up for Parker and Allie. Homecoming week festivities continued with the Powder Puff game on Thursday, followed by the homecoming game against Clarkston on Friday night. ONTV's Joe Johnson was on the sidelines for both games and brings us the exciting highlights. On the evening of Thursday, October 10th, the women of Lake Orion's Class of 2025 took on the women of the Class of 2026 in the annual Powder Puff football game. The seniors kicked off to the juniors to begin the game, but facing a fourth and long, the juniors went for it and came up short. On first and 10 on the 32, quarterback Carly Zybel is in shotgun. She takes the snap, hands off to Mackenzie Tabish, who goes right only to find nothing there. She reverses field, goes east, and turns the corner. She dodges a defender and sprints into the end zone. Touchdown, seniors. It goes into the books as a 32-yard TD, but McKenzie had to cover at least 100 yards before she got into the end zone. The Sydney Goodman extra point was good, and the seniors take an early lead with 9.15 left in the first. In the second quarter, the seniors are facing a fourth and 17 on the juniors' 47-yard line. Number 18, Madeline Light, is in shotgun. She hands off to Sydney Goodman, who goes right and runs through a crowd of juniors, but somehow emerges with flags intact. When she realizes it, she turns on the Jets and is gone. 47 yards into the end zone, and check out that celebration, right out of the Key and Peel playbook. The Goodman PAT is good, and the seniors are up 14-0 with 10-19 left in the second quarter. Later, the juniors are in the red zone with a first and 10. Quarterback True Morgan takes the snap and pitches it to Brielle Coventry. She goes left, jukes a defender, cuts right, evades tacklers, and races into the end zone. Touchdown, junior. Nadia Fedorinchek sends the point after through the uprights, and the juniors are on the board 14-7. At the start of the second half, the juniors kick off to the seniors. Sydney Goodman mishandles the ball at the 30, but picks it up and takes off. She sidesteps defenders and goes the distance, 70 yards into the end zone. 
the PAT was good and the seniors extend their lead, 21-7. Later in the third, the seniors are facing a second and 13 on the juniors 20. Madeline Light is in shotgun. She hands off to Mackenzie Tavish, who goes left toward the sideline, puts on the brakes, makes a nice cut, and is taken down hard on the one yard line. On third and goal, Isabel Watlinski is in at quarterback. She takes the snap and hands off to Tavish, who goes wide right and outruns defenders into the end zone. The PAT was no good, but the seniors take a commanding lead, 27-7 at the end of the third. In the fourth quarter, the juniors have a first and 10 on the seniors' 20. Two major takes the snap, fakes the handoff, goes left and turns the corner. She evades defenders on her way to the end zone. Touchdown, juniors. The Brooke Armstrong extra point was good, and the juniors closed the gap 27-14 with 11.09 left in the game. With the game winding down, the seniors have a first and 10 on the juniors, 22. Light is in shotgun. It's a reverse to Tabish. The juniors bite on the trick play, and Tabish goes untouched into the end zone, her third of the game. Sydney Goodman's PAT was good, her fourth of the game, in addition to her two TDs. The final, 34-14, with the seniors claiming a victory over the juniors and bragging rights for the rest of the school year. Congratulations, seniors, and don't fret, juniors. There's always next year. On Friday night, October 11th, the 4-2 Lake Orion Dragons hosted their rivals, the 4-2 Clarkston Wolves, during the homecoming game at Dragon Stadium. The outcome of this game would help determine who would claim the OAA Red Division title. The game began with Lake Orion kicking off the Clarkston. On their first drive, the Wolves are facing a fourth and two on their own 27 and decide to go for it. Quarterback Alex Washenko hands off to Lucas Bowman and he is stopped short of the line to gain. The Dragons take over on downs. On second and 10 on the Wolves 29, quarterback T.R. Hill is in shotgun. He takes the snap, keeps it, hits the hole and is gone untouched into the end zone. The PAT was no good, but the Dragons take an early lead 6-0 with 9.01 left in the first. On the next Clarkston drive, the Wolves are facing a third and 12th on the Dragons 22. Waschenko is in shotgun. He takes the snap, drops back, and hits Benny Adams, who is ruled down at the one-yard line. On the next play, Griffin Bowman plunges into the end zone for the score. The extra point was good and the Wolves take the lead 7-6 with 6.41 left in the first. On Lake Orion's next possession, the Dragons have a first and 10 on the Wolves 47 yard line. Hill is in shotgun. He hands off to Jackson Vasquez who gets some blocks and outruns defenders all the way to the one before getting knocked out of bounds by Brady Beck. On the next play, Jaden Barrero takes the handoff and breaks the plane to regain the lead. The Dragons are up 13-7 with 2.59 left in the first. An Aiden O'Neill field goal would make the score 13-10 as the first half came to an end. At halftime, the crowd was introduced to the 2024 homecoming court. Last year's king and queen Mario Barishai and Dory Shuhai returned to Dragon Stadium to crown this year's new king and queen. Dory was instructed to place the crown on the head of Allison O'Rourke. And Mario crowned Parker Gannon as the 2024 Homecoming King. Um, I'm just super Thank excited to have win. It really means a lot to us, I think, because, I mean, it feels good to be a winner. I am excited to uh, be the face of uh, this year's Homecoming uh, winner. What do you want to say to your classmates? Uh, thank you guys for voting us. We really appreciate it. I uh, love every single one of you. Yep. After the game resumed, the Dragons found themselves on the Wolves 30, facing a third and seven. Hill is in shotgun, he hits number 88, Ryan Rochelot, who goes the distance. A 30-yard TD reception extends the Dragons' lead to 10, with 5.22 left in the third. In the fourth quarter, an Aiden O'Neill field goal cuts the lead down to seven, with 11 minutes left in the game. The Wolves had one last chance late in the fourth on a penalty-riddled drive 
As the clock ticked down the zeros, the refs huddled together to discuss multiple penalties, and the announcement was finally made. The penalties offset will do it again. The game is over. The Dragons hung on to win 20 to 13 to improve to five and two overall and two and two in the OAA Red. Head coach Chris Bell praised his team on their victory. It's, it's Lake Warren Clarkson. Yeah. You know, who's got the ball last and, and uh, I was really proud of our defense. Our defense really played well. You know, I thought we had some drives where we could have gone up a couple scores and really taken some pressure off our defense and we didn't do it, but they stepped up. So, you know, we made enough plays offensively to score some points, but you know, defensively, you know, I can't say enough good things about them. For the, the improvement from last week to this week, tackling, covering, we put pressure on the quarterback. Yeah. Too many penalties are late. We got to stay off the quarterback. But they, they just, they did, Coach uh, Purdy and his crew did a great job, and the kids executed. With Lake Orion defeating Clarkston and Oxford getting a convincing win over West Bloomfield 38 7 on October 10th, Oxford claims the OAA red title with a 3 and 1 record in the division. The Dragons travel to Farmington on October 18th to take on the Falcons, then return home to host Celine to close out the regular season. From Dragon Stadium, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ONTV Sports. Thanks, Joe. Well, so far the beautiful weather we've been experiencing has allowed local families to enjoy all the fun fall activities taking place throughout the community. Recently, residents were invited to an event that has become an annual tradition for many. On Saturday, September 21st, Orion Township hosted their annual Fall Festival of Family Fun at Camp Agawam. The free event invites families to come out to enjoy food and carnival games, crafts, and even a hay wagon ride to a pumpkin patch. We have multiple sponsors that help us out to make this happen for everybody. We also have our vendors here who help us. Um, honestly, and all of Parks and Rec and Orion Township staff are what make it possible because we work together as a team. Orion Township purchased Camp Agawam, a former Boy Scout camp, in 2014. In 2018, the community came together to build the Kaboom Playground. The first Fall Festival of Family Fun took place in 2019 and has since become an annual tradition that local families look forward to every year. Oh, it just makes my heart really warm. So I love being able to offer something free to the community because it gives a chance for all to participate. And it's just something that makes me really happy to see all the smiles on everybody's faces. This is, well, this is why we work here because um, doing these things for the community is why we do what we do. Next up on Orion Township's calendar is the popular Boo Bash event scheduled for Friday, October 18th at 5 p.m. at the Orion Center. There will be trick-or-treating, cider and snacks, a hay wagon ride, carnival games, and plenty of photo ops. For more information, visit orionparks.com. The Halloween season is in full swing, with many beginning the celebration way back at the start of September. And like Orion, some may point to one fun event in particular as the official start of the spooky season. On the evening of Saturday, September 21st, dozens of people gathered at Ed's Broadway Gift and Costume in downtown Lake Orion for the 11th annual Zombie Walk. Many arrived early to have makeup applied or to pick up ghoulish accessories at the store. And then at 8 p.m., the zombies began their march of the undead. The event acts as a fundraiser for the Orion Lighted Christmas Parade. So when I had my 60th birthday, uh, my wife asked me what I wanted to do and I said let's do a zombie walk and so we put that all together and uh, you know and that's really how it all started and we ended up, um, we wanted to donate the money that we raised from it. So we donated, you know, we give it to the uh, Orient Area Parade uh, group. So, you know, we have, we charge for people to, you know, it's dollars to be in the walk. And then we turned it into a poker run also because the first few years we were losing zombies half, <laughs> half ways through. So we said, you know, we, uh, somebody else came up with the idea of doing a poker run. So we added that into it to keep everybody together until the end. The first stop along the way was Fork and Pint located on Broadway and Chatbolt Street where participants enjoyed drink specials and appetizers. 
The group then passed through the Flint Street alleyway on their way to 313 Pizza Bar. Other stops included Johnny Black's and Wine Social before ending up at the American Legion to bring things to a close. It's a lot of fun, you know, I mean, when, when we're walking back this way, sometimes there might be cars, you know, stopped at a red light. And so, you know, some of the people, I get a little nervous because I don't want anybody to get hit by a car or anything. But I mean, you know, they're all out there, you know, climbing over, you know, standing up by the car and things like that. But everybody, everybody has fun with it. Even people that are driving their cars, they're laughing and it kicks off the Halloween season, you know. Again, the event acts as a fundraiser for the Orion Light at Christmas Parade, which is scheduled to take place on Saturday, December 7th in downtown Agorian. For more information, visit orionlightedparade.com. In 1922, the National Fire Protection Association named the second week of October Fire Prevention Week to commemorate the Great Chicago Fire of 1871. More than 100 years later, the Orion Township Fire Department observes Fire Prevention Week with an open house. On the morning of Saturday, October 12th, the fire department invited residents to visit Fire Station 1 in downtown Lake Orion to enjoy cider and donuts, fun activities, and plenty of photo ops. Of course, the main priority at the event was to share information that will keep families safe in the event of a fire. Uh, kitchen fire safety is our one of our big pushes this year and smoke alarms. Uh, so one of the things we're really encouraging people to do this year is to either check their smoke alarms or if they have older smoke alarms uh, to get them replaced uh, so that we are can ensure that they are working. What other types of things can families do this? Sure, a fire safety plan is always a good idea. So having a, a way to get out of the house, uh, reviewing with kids or or other people on the best ways to get out of house and it's not always a door if a window or something like that is appropriate uh, and then having a place outside that we can meet and account for everybody so that we know everybody's out and then just make sure once you get out that you stay out and let the fire department come in and do what we do. According to the Lake Orion Review, the fire department responded to over 3,000 calls in 2024 so far, with 238 calls coming in over a three-week period in September into early October. For more information on Fire Prevention Month, visit firstalert.com. Longtime businesses and restaurants help contribute to the atmosphere that makes the Orion community a destination that attracts people from all over Oakland County. One such business recently celebrated a major milestone. On September 27th and 28th, the Lake Orion community was invited to come out to Palazzo de Bacci on Lapeer Road to help them celebrate 20 years of business. Established in 2004, owner Tony Battaglia originally just wanted to have a place where family and friends could play bocce. The origin story was that I had been in the construction business for 30 years and I retired. After a year I got bored and I decided to, uh, I played bocce so we decided to um, have a little place to play bocce with my buddies and I had this property for years so I started designing a building and it kind of got away from me. <laughs> we were going to have just a small building with maybe um, four or five thousand square feet but we ended up with 32,000 square feet, ten courts and a restaurant um, and we thought maybe it would do okay and 20 years later and here we are. Not only does Palazzo Debachi offer a place for locals to enjoy good food and friendly competition, but Tony Battaglia, a ranked bocce player who won a gold medal in the U.S. Championships, began hosting national and international tournaments almost immediately upon opening. In fact, the first year um, we had the, the world championship here. I invited them to have it here, and, uh, and since then we've had many, many tournaments from all over the world and all over the country. We just had one uh, not even a month ago, and that was uh, 360 players from uh, 20 different states in the United States. Yeah. So, yeah, no, it's, I, I did always envision playing bocce, yeah. yeah. For more information or to make reservations, you can call 248-371-9987 or visit palazzodebocce.com. 
Parents with children attending school will quickly discover that students who have an interest in sports, music, and skilled trades may face financial burdens. Athletic equipment and musical instruments can be incredibly expensive, and some parents may have to break the news to their children that they just can't afford it. That's why one local organization has stepped up to try to help these families in need. On Saturday, October 12th, members of the community gathered inside Motor City Granite in downtown Lake Orion to officially celebrate the launch of the John Patrick Rowland Youth Sports Fun. Dragon. One, two, three, dragon! dragon. This is for the John Patrick Rowland Scholarship Fund that we launched about a month ago. And today is the official ribbon cutting of, I, I hate to use the phrase, no kid left behind because it's massively overused, but it, it's, it's very fitting for what this is for. That was John's number one wish was that we never, ever, ever, ever let dollars get in the way of a child participating in whether it's arts music uh, a sport whatever they want to get involved in that elevates them to the next level that's our priority the dragon foundation started out as a 501 c3 nonprofit organization in 2002 under the name lake orion youth football and cheer it has since expanded to include four pillars athletics arts and music mindfulness and skilled trades when i took it over about five years ago we knew that there were some other avenues to serve our youth, and that's about five to 15 year olds. Mm -hmm. And so we created the four pillars, which is sports, arts and music, skilled trades, and mindfulness. And so throughout all of that, what we've done is when we, when we lost John Rowland, which is what this is for today, we created a scholarship fund for our athletes and he was one of our great coaches in football, baseball and Michelle Rowland is one of our past presidents of the football organization. So we're just really excited that we get to number one, get kids involved that otherwise couldn't afford to be involved. Mm -hmm. That's our number one priority is that in any one of the four pillars, the children can participate. And so it has always been my goal that because of youth sports and the abuse that has really happened in price gouging, taking advantage of our parents, I wanted to bring a ton of value to our parents and say it can be done locally and done right, fiscally responsibly. Students quickly outgrow their uniforms and shoes, and the organization is hoping families can donate these items to those who can use them. They're also looking for individuals and corporations to help support the cause. My number one priority was that it stopped coming from the parents. Right. Okay, so I started really exercising the, the validity of what a 501c3 partnership is. That's why I opened up to the skill trades, the arts and music, because it broadens the interest of third party investors like wealthy individuals, wealthy corporations, or any corporation that wants to begin or start a skilled trades program. We're connected to all the high schools here in, in Northern Oakland County and Southern Lapeer. And so a lot of it, a lot of our funding has been just through partnerships of wealthy individuals and corporations. For more information or to make a donation, visit thedragonfoundation.com. And finally, on Thursday, October 10th, representatives of the Chamber of Commerce as well as family and friends gathered at a brand new plaza on Baldwin Road to celebrate the official grand opening of Ivy Rehab. just did another um, grand opening in Rochester Hills and it's so exciting when you see the Orion Chamber and Rochester Hills Chamber and just the support that you guys give us is is what keeps us successful you know I, I always say we're business owners but you guys are kind of our silent partner business owner in terms of supporting us and we support the community and it's just that sense of community has just been so nice and you guys are so welcoming and we're just so excited to be here. Ivy Rehab is a network of physical therapy clinics that was founded in 2003. Currently, there are approximately 600 locations in 14 states, with 17 in the eastern portion of Michigan. 
in Michigan, we have what's called direct access, that if you have two buckets of different um, insurance, whether it's Medicare or Blue Cross Blue Shield, they do require that you have a prescription. However, any other prescription is valid for physical therapy that you can bring in and you can utilize your insurance. We offer self-pay, we offer financial aid hardship, that if people, we never want financial aspect of it to be a burden to prevent you from receiving care. So we have a lot of options. We have payment plans. We just really want to be able to help as many people as we can. The Orion Township location can be found in a recently completed plaza on the east side of Baldwin, just south of Maybe Road. In fact, the plaza is so new, a Google Maps image shows the building under construction. Yeah, so it's actually um, funny, a couple of years ago when they were building this during COVID, which is what the delay of this build out was, unfortunately, uh, my husband's father grew up in this area and he drove by and one Christmas he said, hey, have you, I got a, a new building for you. And I said, oh, okay. And I, I checked it out and I was so happy just because this is such a, a growing and populated community with just so much to give and it has a wonderful community and just that sense of community and I really wanted to be a part of that and to be able to help as many people as we can. For more information or to make an appointment visit ivyrehab.com. You can also find them on Facebook under Ivy Rehab Lake Orion. And with that we'll wrap up this edition of ONTV News. On behalf of the hardworking ONTV News team I'm Stacey Calloway. And I'm Lexi McKinney. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.